So something that we've done quite often now when we've used heat maps is once we've once we've done the heat map, we can use the scatter plot to investigate the, uh, the correlation a bit more. Uh, so we've we've done this quite a lot to create a, a scatter plot of strongly correlated variables. <clears throat> um, and if in this particular data set, if you remember that these are the, the uh, variables H, M, and O seem to be <coughs> strongly correlated. Now, uh, in HP plot, although you can create a scatter plot of any pair, there's no one function that will do scatter plots of, of multiple pairs like this. So, um, what we can do is take a load of plots, so we can create a number of these HV plot things and compose them together in, in different ways. Uh, one way is to add the plots together. So you create three plots, you add them together, they'll appear side by side and their axes will be connected, if that's possible, if the axis, if it makes sense for the axes to be connected. Or if you multiply the plots using a star, multiply in inverted commas because you're not really multiplying them, it composes them by overlaying one on top of the, each other, on top of the other. Um, <clears throat> just to say, this can then create massively long lines of code if you do that. So uh, you can use a backslash symbol to continue onto another line. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here's... Um, a code that, that creates scatter plots of H and M and O against each other. So if you look at the code, uh, I'm, I'm fixing the limits to be the same in each case, the X and Y limits to be the same for each plot. Uh, and then I'm doing H versus M. So the X values on, on the bottom is H and the, on, the, um, <clears throat> on the Y axis is M. Uh, so it's H versus M and I set the limits and I set the size of the dots. And then I compose that plot by adding another one, uh, H versus O. And then I add another plot, which is M versus O. Okay, and this is all, essentially, this is all one line of code. Or well, it's treated by Python as one line of code because I'm using this uh, plus to add the plots together, but I'm using a backslash to continue it to say that this, is a, that this co line of code hasn't finished yet. And when I do that... Um, so although that looks a bit complicated, actually it's just taking three plots and adding them together. Uh, when I do that, uh, this is the picture I get. So you'll see, uh, let's run that one. And here it is. And once again, the, uh, the axes, because I've set the axes to be the same on each uh, and each thing, they should be uh, linked together. So as I zoom into one, I'll zoom into the other. Okay. Uh, they're slightly different values, but I, I'm still able to zoom uh, each one independently. So that gives me um, plots composed by putting them next to each other. The other way to do it is to overlay them on top of each other, uh, and that's just exactly the same code, but now I'm using this, this asterisk to kind of multiply them together. And when I do that, because it uh, H, um, H3 plot works out that I'm putting three plots together, it'll draw each each uh, scatter plot in different colors. Okay, so um, if we run that one, And wait for it to appear. It's just taking its time. Oh, there it is. There you can see uh, the plots are all composed together. And again, I've got, I've now got three hover tools. So I can hover over different parts, and I can turn the, the hover tools off. So you can see, uh, which one is that one? Uh, it looks like it. Uh, let's turn that one off. So which one have we got left? It's this one here. So I've turned off the two hover plots for hover tools for these two plots, but I've still got one left here. So you can turn these hover tools off uh, at will. Okay, <clears throat> um, it doesn't quite make sense to label the axes anymore because now uh, the x-axis is sometimes h and sometimes m, and the y-axis is sometimes m and sometimes o. So uh, it's hard to interpret these plots exactly, but they do give you a sense of what the correlations look like. Uh, so despite it presenting similar info to example 9, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to interpret. 
Okay, uh, let's finish that video there and then we'll move on to look at bubble plots.